uh, self and other, can you talk um, a little bit about that mesh effect, what it is, and what your intention is behind it? Sure, can. <laughs> um, well, it's, um, it was a way of rescreening. So the reason why that mesh is there is because um, I did, I, I did pull some of this stuff off of YouTube, but I actually filmed it um, off of an iPad just to create a bit of distance and to create, um, I hate to like reference analog TV media, but it, it kind of, that is the age that I grew up watching some sort of TV. So I wanted to create a distance, but also to make it clear that you're watching something that's being re-screened, not just screen as it was intentionally in its original form it's going to be screen for re-education purposes. <laughs> Did I answer your question? Yes, it does. Thank you. Anyone else? <laughs> <laughs> what was the process you used, Buzz, to, in the last episode to have the person, you know, the people, Anne Frank and Justin Bieber, in the house with the drunk? Like, mm -hmm. Did you already talk about that? Um, so the question is, what's the process I used for the third episode? Um, so the drawing that you see initially is a drawing, and then I used Photoshop to erase that little hole in the window, and I, in Premiere I layered like a video. So I, so I, ha I was TAing this video class, and then one of my, I was talking about my project, walking back to the fine arts building one time, and one of my students was like, you realize I look like Anne Frank, right? <laughs> so I was like, oh my god, no. So, so I, green, I green screened her, I used a green screen, and somehow the studio lighting just, it wasn't super fancy. I just kind of like key, keyed out the background and um, just kind of layered it so that it looked like she was in the space. It was a couple of different, like and especially in the first one, it's, it's like a couple of different layers masking her so that she looks like she's sitting at the desk. Is there, is there a way that these movies can be accessed, like if you wanted to show it to someone, are they available anywhere, or are they so, shown only in little film festivals like this one, a few thousand people see them and then they disappear forever. I just, I know the economics are insane, they are very expensive to produce things and there's no real money payback for having created great works of art. Mine are on Vimeo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, and also I think that we have to think. <laughs> okay. um, I think that we have to think about the internet as not just um, as also a method of distribution, not just like a um, a way of communication. So I, if you can't find my film film online, Google my name. Oh, get past to Brazilian porn stars once you get to my website. <laughs> I'll just send you the link if you can't find it online, but I, I find it on Vimeo too. Yeah. Same. <laughs> <laughs> Which is all why it's all more important for us to see this work together in a, in a curated setting where you can make the connections between all the different um, the different films. I mean, it's part of the, the curating process, which is so amazing. And, and in one of the earlier screenings, I, I thank the programming team because um, you watch so much stuff and these themes emerge and it's like magic and I just feel like this was thematically so strong that, um, you know, not to toot our horn, but like this is a unique experience. Yeah. Toot, toot. Yeah. Woo. preface it by saying that thank you to all that was a fantastic lineup of work uh, really very 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 enjoyable touched a lot of hearts I think in a very kind of fantastically like relaxed kind of way so I just wanted to say thank you first um, I have a question for Fred um, so before my sort of line of studies got derailed into a more specific kind of discipline, I really wanted to sort of delve further into like this kind of, I felt very Eurocentric uh, engagement with a, with a performance, right? Like 40 minute applauses would like sort of punctuate 
each performance and it would be 12.30 in the morning already when people would start leaving the theaters. Um, so my question as a French person, I assume, <laughs> uh, what is like, what is your, uh, what is your relationship with the, with, with the act of applauding? Um, why was that something that you chose to focus on? And uh, do you see a transatlantic difference between the French and the Americans? I, 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 absolutely, don't, I absolutely don't know that. Uh, I don't know if there is a difference between uh, uh, France and here. Uh, I have no answer, I'm sorry. <laughs> What about your relationship with the class? How do you feel about that? Or, or, or why focus on the why focus on the applause at least on the uh, for the for the film? Why focus on that? On the clapping. Um, well, it, it, she she is becoming like just an an apparition, mm. uh, apparition. And um, <clears throat> and and she is not singing, so it's it's the the simple fact to be here on stage is an event, and uh, um, well, there is nothing much to say. <laughs> it's only this. this no, I, I actually think that that response is very succinctly. I think that's. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Jim Ferrand, another question. Yeah, who made this Sal Minio film? Uh, they're not here tonight, but that was Chance Taylor. Well, I just want to say for someone who's Randy in my generation, old, old Queens. <laughs> what that film has done is all of this was always very coded, and you would never see it all together. And it's young filmmakers today don't have the same kind of problem of, of being expressive. This was all coded, and it was so beautifully done and made contemporary the way it was put together in one piece. It absolutely wet my lips. <laughs> <laughs> Front row. Um, before you like decided to uh, use the Robert Baker images, were there any other sources of inspiration for you to find what decided on that one? For sorry, other photographers? Yeah, yeah, the photographers. Um, yeah, I mean, a lot of the project I'm doing is photo based, so this one was just like a a stab in the film direction, uh, but it was a lot of Peter Hujar and David Winarovich. Um, and so a lot of the schools of thought came from from them and Alvin Baltra and the peers. Um, and this was, I think, more of a a look also into gender. I think that the title also touches on what well, an imperfect flower has both genders. Um, so I was I was interested in discussing that as well in the performance of gender. So other questions. So I just had a quick question for Fred. Um, yes. So, do you think your film is funny? Yes. Okay, great. <laughs> yes. yes. Of course. There, you know, there's because lots of different ways to approach it. Yes. And, uh, you know, that's all. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, Tiger? Yeah, going off that, so if you screen this other places, how loud has the crowd gotten? as they've been watching it, because I was like, ready to yell, yes, Gaga, the whole time. Yes. <laughs> we should be doing what they're doing. <laughs> After a while, it's just, you can't not laugh. Yeah. Personally, I don't know. That's how I, do it. Uh, I it was, um, it was screened um, at Queer Lisboa, but I wasn't there, so, um, but I had, um, a good news from the festival. So, so that's that's was that where world premiere there in this? Yes, week? it was last month, uh, two months ago. Yeah. Yes, two I months see. ago. Okay. So, not many audiences have had the chance yet. No. So great. <laughs>
We're gonna how, set. How did we do? What do you like? What you know? What do you want to react? Do you want that? <laughs> <laughs> I think that's that's what you know, we have another screening. There's another performance happening outside. There's dinner being served. We need to talk about the installations, performances that are happening. Chris Gray, are you gonna come up here and say it? Oh, oh sure. Run, 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 run. Oh, hi, then. hi. Here I come. Hi, everyone. Oh, thanks for all of your work. That was really nice. Hi, my name is Chris Gray. Um, hi, hi, friends. Uh, I had the um, uh, privilege of curating installations and performances for the festival this year. So uh, you may have noticed that art here at Mix is all around you. It's in the bathrooms, it's on the floor, it's hanging from the ceiling, it's everywhere that you look. So we invite you to experience the uh, immersive installations that are around the space while you're here or at all of the remaining evenings of the festival where we'll all be all week long, all the time. Uh, and I also wanted to um, specifically let you know that directly after this, there's going to be an incredible performance um, called Towards the Death of Cinema, uh, towards the back of the space um, by the stage by Malik Amalia and Nathan Hill. So please join us for that as well when we exit. Thanks.